give the Lord a hand clap of praise and glory. Thank you, Father, Lord God, for an open heaven. Father, we thank you, Father, for the neighborhood that's among the influence of God. Father, we thank you, Father, that the crack addict, Father, will become addicted, Father, to the Bible and to the preaching of your word. Father, we thank you, Father, for a, for a, a revolution, Father, in that community, Lord God, that they'll begin to decree that Jesus is Lord. Father, we thank you even now for an invasion, Father, Lord God, upon the, the people of Houston, Lord God. And Father, we thank you for multiplicity, Father. Uh, how many know that the Bible says that when you sow a house into the kingdom of God, that you will receive a hundredfold in this life? Hallelujah. How many of say that with me? When I sow the land's property, I'll reap a hundredfold in this lifetime. Oh, I want to tell you, I sold my house so that this property could be built. Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. So I'm expecting, well, that's, oh, that's just the blessing of God coming over us because of what we have done as a principle of sowing and reaping. Glory to Jesus. There's a hundred homes that we're going to come into occupy. Glory to Jesus from the north to the south to the west and east. Glory to Jesus for the glory of God. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh, don't say it's impossible. Oh, don't say it's impossible. Don't say, oh, I don't know how it's going to happen. Yes. See, if, if, if you could do it, if you could do it, it wouldn't take any faith. Glory yes. to Jesus. Oh, I want to be. Am I, am I in the house of the believers? Or am I in the house of God? Say unto the mountain, be thou removed and cast into the sea. Yeah. Yeah. Dare to dream. Dare to dream. Woo! Dare to dream. Come on now, somebody. Say it. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to tell you, sometimes we get the counsel of this world and we're, we're used to operating in a certain way. Yeah. But I want to tell you what we, how we need to operate is we got to hear God. Yeah. Oh, I have been around some anointed people before and they love God. Sometimes they don't necessarily give you the counsel that it, it is of the Holy Ghost. Yes. That's why the Bible says the Holy Spirit will be our witness. Hallelujah. They will counsel the Spirit of God, the anointing of God will bear witness in, in the Spirit. See, if I, if I receive counsel from uh, the pastors, they say, you, you're crazy building the church over here. I mean, John Osteen, when he went over there and built his church, they said, what are you doing that for? That doesn't make any logic. No, we tell you not to do that. But how many know when you hear from God? Yeah, right. You're going to begin to do things that might not seem to be logical. Yeah. Right. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we just give you praise and glory, Father. Just give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Yeah. So how many want to hear the preaching of the word? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You want to dismiss or how many want, want to continue? Yeah. Lord, we're just yeah. Yeah. Tell, me, and tell me, what did we minister on last Sunday? Backslidden, the young believing, and redemption. Amen. Oh, now how many know that when you when you use the word repent, people began to get a little uncomfortable. Amen. But guess what? I want to tell you there's a benefit. And I want to talk about that today. Let's hold up our Bibles. Father, we thank you even now in the name of Jesus. We bind dullness of hearing, Father. Lord God, we thank you for an open heaven, Father. And Lord God, I thank you, Father, that we have an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Father, move upon us, Father. Impulse upon us, Father, by your Spirit. And bring us, Father, into our full possession and our inheritance in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you, Father, that I'm a vessel, Lord God, that is yielded. So speak through me, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. And someone say amen. amen. The title of the sermon today is called True Repentance, Woo! True Deliverance. Oh, uh, you say this with me. True Repentance, oh, True Deliverance. We will begin our reading, and Brother Jesse, if you can be ready to, to read scripture. But we're going to begin our reading out of 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. That is 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 9. When you're there, say amen. Hallelujah. How many have a Bible? Amen. And the Lord is not slack concerning His promise. 
as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering, say long-suffering, or patient towards us, not willing that any should perish, but that we should all come to repentance. Yes. Yes. Say the word with me. Repentance. Yes. Now, how many have a definition of the word repent? What is your definition? Somebody tell me what the word repent means. I'm sorry. Well, I said, well, I'm going to go to the Webster's Dictionary, Noah's Webster, and I guess it was uh, came out at the turn of the century, and he was a, a Christian man. And, and the word repentance in the Webster's Dictionary defines repent as a change of mind. Say that with me. A change of mind to feel such regret or dissatisfaction to change one's mind. In other words, repentance means a change of mind. Now, I have a, a quick uh, a, a abbreviation. Simply come out of agreement with one's belief system and take God's side in the matter. How many know that we can take God's side in the matter when allow, allow us to hold the Word of God as the highest standard in our life? Amen? Allow God to be God. Turn to the person next to you and say, allow God to be God. Allow God to be God. In Romans chapter 3, verse 3, it says, For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? In other words, uh, uh, will my unbelieving make not the reality of God's word true? And God says, God forbid, let God be true in every man alive. Say that with me. Allow God to be true in every man alive. In Psalms 138 verse 2 it says, And I will worship towards thy holy temple, and praising thy name for thy loving kindness, and for thy truth. Say truth with me. His word is true. Psalms 138.2 For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. Now how many know that God understands authority? How many know to have authority, you must be under authority? How many know authority is never assumed, authority is given? Say that with me. Authority is never assumed. Authority is given. And so God began to say, I must submit and have authority of, of someone in my life. How many know that, that, that He searched the whole world and all the universe and found none that was greater than Him? He says, who can I, can I submit to? Who, who can I, uh, 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 should I say, have authority over my life? Because it's a principle that he's instilled from, all, from eternity. And he says, this is what I'll do. I will magnify the words that I speak above who I am. Above my name. Understand that. Hallelujah. Understand that this is the mind of God. The Bible says His Word is truth. Say that with me. His Word is truth. So when we want to take God's side in the matter, do we go and begin to counsel with unbelievers? No. When we begin to counsel or try to seek godly counsel on, 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 on a, a relationship, where do we go? We go to the Bible. Amen. This is your final authority over your life. Somebody say amen. amen. Now how many know that most of the body of Christ, and I call it this way, has stinking thinking? That's right. <laughs> Over the person next to you say, he's talking about you. Talking about you. <laughs> Let's turn to our Bibles. Glory to Jesus. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 23, Brother Jesse. 1 Samuel 15, 23 through 24. And this is what I call stinking thinking. 1 Samuel 15, 23 through 24. 
Samuel chapter 15, 23 and 24. For rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Say this with me. Because, because I can't hear everybody. Because, because thou hast rejected the word, rejected his, word, his, word his word, he says, I'll reject thee. Now notice that rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Somebody asked me, what is witchcraft? What, what, what is witchcraft? How many know Galatians chapter 5 says it's a work of the flesh? How many know divination is something that you tie into an unrighteous spirit world? But witchcraft simply is trying to manipulate, dominate, control, intimidate somebody uh, to get what you want. I want to tell you that is called witchcraft. How many know that they, they said, well, you better not uh, uh, upset mama because you know she'll get angry. And so we become manipulated because of anger. How many know we have a saying in, in our house, if mama isn't happy, nobody's happy. Glory to Jesus. I'm just teasing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But, but how many know if, 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 if your wife isn't happy, no one's going to be happy, really? So one might control by anger. How many of you have ever seen somebody pout? They get a good pout on them. How many know that's witchcraft? How many know that when we begin to manipulate brothers and sisters in the Lord to do what we want to do, even though it might be good for them, it's really getting into what we call charismatic witchcraft. How many know God will not supersede the will of somebody? And we're not to supersede the will of an individual. Hallelujah. But now, now we're getting to the rest of the story. Someone say stubbornness. Stubbornness. How many of you have ever seen somebody that's stubborn? Amen. I want to tell you, hallelujah. I've seen some people that are stubborn. I, I have had children that sometimes can be very stubborn. Yeah. Yeah. I'll, I'll put a chokehold on them and I'll squeeze them until they're red in the face and their eyes pop out. And I say, okay, just say, uh-uh, uh, -uh, uh, -uh. I say, uh, -uh. After about 15 minutes and they're kind of blue in the lips, I'm going, man, I'm not going to let, I'm not going to uncle. Christina. Glory to Jesus, I love her anyways, amen. But simply, stubbornness is a thought process that keeps you from coming in agreement with the things of God. How many know that over the course of our life we have what we call belief systems, whether they're true or whether they're not true? And so when the Word of God comes, we simply dismiss the Word of God and we've now made our thoughts our idols. Our thoughts have become our gods. So that's why the Bible says stubbornness is idolatry. You're worshiping idols. You have set up your thoughts as your God. How many understand what I'm saying? Amen. Let's read this again. Verse 23, Brother Jesse. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft, and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Wow. <laughs> because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he hath also rejected thee from being king. Verse 24. And Saul said unto Samuel, I have sinned, for I have transgressed the commandment of the Lord, and thy words, because I feared the people and obeyed their voice. How many know that we begin to become controlled by the opinions of others? And so we began to want to become people pleasers. 
And so in becoming people pleasers, when the word of God comes, we begin to reject the word of God yeah. because we fear the people more than we fear the things of God. Oh, hallelujah. How many understand what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Father, I thank you, Father, for your anointing. That breaks the yokes, Father, in the name of Jesus. Now, how many know that I just began to think about this? People are pretty strange folks, aren't they? Talk to the person that Jesus said, yeah, he's talking about you. Red necked and stiff necked. But I want to. To, to talk about redneck being R E A D, the redneck that have their eyes in the Bible. Come on, hallelujah. The ones that, that are saying, man, give me some treasure. I'm, I'm hungry for the Word of God. I'm going to hide the Word of God in my heart. But are you stiff neck? Turn to somebody else and say, are you redneck or are you stiff neck? Oh, hallelujah. Some of you say both. But your redneck is R-E-D neck. Huh? Yeah. Jeremiah 17, 23. Jeremiah 17, 23. But they obeyed not, neither inclined their ear, but they were made their necks stiff that they might not hear nor receive instruction. Their necks were what? Yeah. I can't hear anybody. Yeah. Why? Because they would not receive instruction. Turn to somebody and say, the buck stops here. How many know that the world would say there is no absolute truth? You make your own reality. How many realize that that's the way the world thinks? They, they believe that there is not an absolute truth, but there are variables and that you make your own reality. And since they believe that way, they never take responsibility for what they do. I'll say that again. They never take responsibility for what they do. They blame society. They blame the music world. How many remember the son of Sam? He blamed the dog. He said, the devil began to talk through the dog and he told me to kill these people. They began to blame our parents. We began to blame the way that we are raised and we never come to true repentance. We are in what we call the blame game. Well, I was born on the wrong side of the track. Or I'm too old or I'm not too young or, or I'm not attractive enough or I'm, I'm too far overweight. And you always begin to take the, and put the blame on somebody else instead of taking the responsibility for your own self. Listen, as long as you blame someone, you will never come to true repentance. Turn to somebody and say, the buck stops here. The buck stops here. Well, let's, let's, let's just read. Let's read John chapter 3, verse 17. When you're there, say amen. Brother Jesse, read John 3, 17 through 21. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Turn to somebody and say, that's good news. He didn't come to condemn me. But He came to save me. I want to tell you, that's good news. How many know the world needs to hear that? That, that Jesus Christ did not come to condemn you, but He came to save you. Verse 18. He that believeth on Him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light is come to the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Wow. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. 
But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be manifest, that they are wrought in God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. <clears throat> How many know that, that if you're not doing right, that you don't want to be exposed. You don't want to be revealed. You want to continue in the process of, 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 of your mess. And so as you continue in your lifestyle and you continue in that which was hidden, then the Word of God begins to be preached to you. And now you have a, a situation on your hands where you have to make a decision. And when you begin to make a decision, you're going to say, I, am I going to run to the light or I'm going to run away from the light? And as long as I am in the hidden places, then God will not be able to deal with me and I will be all right and I will have a good conscience. But I want to tell you one thing, that God has brought you here for one reason, hallelujah, to give you a message that He has not come to condemn you, but He's come to bring restoration to you. And He's saying, I love you too much to leave you the way you are, even though that you might hide, even though that you might come into church late, hallelujah, even though that you might miss even in a Wednesday night. Oh, though you run from me, you cannot hide. See, I don't know about you. If, if, if you were diagnosed and, and sin, let's just say it's like a, a leprosy or like cancer, how many want to continue to carry cancer in your body? And that's what sin does. Sin begins to eat away at your soul until you become so desecrated. So you become so weak and you become so anemic that you lost your will to live. Well, oh, I've been around a lot of people that have gone through chemotherapy, that, that have gone into eternity with, with, with sickness and disease and with cancer. And they said, you know, when I went through chemo, well, it made me lose my will to live. Yes. Right, and that's what sin yes. does for us if we will not bring it to the light. Yes. Right. Right. It will eat you. It will destroy you. And eventually kill you. Yes, right, right. Anybody that is in their right mind, if they have cancer in their body, wants it out. Yes. And Jesus said, man, I have the answers. This is good news. Hallelujah. I have the antidote. See, I shed my blood before the foundations of the world. All you need to do is come and be reconciled unto me. And I will not remove the reproach and the iniquity from off of you by confessing and coming to the light. Yes. Wow, wow, wow. Thank you, Thank you. Oh, you, you, got, you see, you've got to understand what, what really repentance is. It's simply coming out of agreement with your way of doing things the way the world system begins to operate and begin to say, Father, I'm taking your side yes, yes, for all you. That's in the matter. That's right. Amen. Amen. Yes. In Genesis 2, verse 17, the truth is God's word. Say this with me. The truth is God's word. In Genesis 2, 17, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in thou, thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Who said that? God's giving that instruction to who? How many know as soon as God brings forth His Word, the lie will come? I'll say that again. As soon as the Word of God is presented, the truth of God is presented, the lie will come. How many know that God will manifest healing to you? And then all of a sudden as you leave the building, you're feeling good. And all the symptoms that you had were removed from you. And all of a sudden by the time you get into the parking lot, you, the devil begins to worship in, 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 or begins to influence your mind. And begins to influence you and impulse you and begin to say, you didn't really get healed. Hey. So God begins to give the instruction, His word is truth, but then the lie comes. Yes. 
in Genesis 3, 4, And the serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. <laughs> How many have ever heard Christians say, Well, you don't have to do all that. The lie will come. Well, that's in, that's in the Old Testament. See, we're living in the New Testament. We're living under grace. So their salvation is a nickel and dime salvation. Hallelujah. And so they come and go as, as they desire to with no true repentance because they have bought the lie. You've fallen into the well and you're thinking you're swimming to the top and all of a sudden you realize that you're swimming to the bottom. See, that's what a lie does. It perverts that which is real. You think you're going to heaven and all of a sudden you realize you wake up in hell. Because you bought the dollar and took a lie will send you to hell. If you believe it. See, my greatest fear is to believe a lie. And it should be our greatest fear. See, when I get up to heaven, I want to know all is right between me and my Father. I want Him to, to smile and say, hey, I don't even need Him saying, well done. All I need to do is look on His countenance. Hallelujah. Say, hallelujah. All is well between me and the Father. Hallelujah. Hey. You don't need to pat me on the back. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. All I got to know is that I don't want him saying, well, what did you do with your life? Well, I cast out devils for you. I preached the gospel with power and authority. I did miracles for you. And we remember the rest of the story. How many of you have ever been around somebody who said, well, you don't have to do all that? How many of you have ever heard that? Well, that's Old Testament. How many of you have ever heard that? How many of you know it's still the Word of God? Oh, that's legalism. How many of you know that's, that's what we hear a lot? Hallelujah. Well, that's legalism. What does Satan come to do? Realize this. As soon as the Word of God is preached, the devil will come to bring a lie. How many understand that? Glory to Jesus. Follow with me. Follow with me because we're going somewhere. The same lie is told today. In Matthew 13, 19 it says, When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth it not, then come the wicked one to catch away that which is sown in the heart this is he which received the word of God by the wayside. How many know that they were there in church on that Sunday morning? They all heard the word of God. They heard the word of the kingdom, but they understood it not. How many know that's why that's why we had tapes? That's why we just bought a, a, a CD and DVD reproducer that we can burn five copies at a time. Because guess what? We need to bombard our mind. We need to begin to dissect this father. I need some understanding. The Bible says, get wisdom. Hallelujah. In the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord, and the beginning of, of that will bring understanding. And with your wisdom, get understanding. I want to tell you, you need to begin to dissect the word of God. You need to have a passion for the word of God. And began to say, Father, I don't understand all this, but Father, I ask for your illumination. Send your spirit, Father, to bring revelation. And he'll begin to speak to you. And he'll begin to say, My word interprets the scripture. Uh, in other words, my word will interpret the word out of the mouth of two or three witnesses. Allow every word to be established. I'm going to show you here. Uh, I'm going to show you there. Uh, sometimes I just open up the Bible and say, Turn here. Uh, I want to tell you, it's a very awesome thing. And he began to turn to the scriptures. Uh, he said, Well, turn here. I'll turn it for you. And the scriptures begin to turn right to the place where you said it. Oh, I'm going to tell you, it's stinky sometimes. But it's getting real. And if I will get understanding, when the devil comes and tries to take that which has been planted, 
I'm going to rise up and I say, hey, that's not the voice of my father. Oh, hallelujah. My sheep know my voice in a voice of a stranger. They will not follow. Hallelujah. Listen to what I'm saying. Glory to Jesus. My sheep know my voice in the voice of a stranger. They will not follow. I want to tell you, glory to Jesus. Many times when I was walking uh, with the Lord, I would hear the voice of the enemy. The first time that I, that I came to, to, to church, I heard this. He said, hey, these people don't care about you. How many of you have ever heard that? Yeah. These people don't love you. And how many know, if I don't listen to that lie, I would have got up and I would have left and I began to do that. But then I heard the voice of the good shepherd. He said, to have a friend, you become a friend. Just because nobody came over there and introduced themselves to you and shook your hand, why don't you get off your blessed assurance and go shake their hand? Lord, is how you doing, man? Glad to see you. Hallelujah. What, what do you think the enemy did? He said, curse is foiled again. Oh, I'll tell you, the first time I, they were having a Bible study, and, and there's the enemy telling me, hey, man, you need to be up there. They're preaching there. You, you have a more of anointing on him, and all of a sudden he tried to bring jealousy to me. He's a liar. No, he's a, a father of lies. There's no truth in him. Well, I'm more talented than that. I'm more anointed than that. And all of a sudden, you get jealousy in your heart. As soon as there are appointments here uh, that are given, all of a sudden, you begin to get upset because you say, man, I'm more qualified. I'm more, more talented. I'm more anointed. But you know what the Lord said? He says, you repent of your jealousy. He said, when your brother is up there, you need to be praying for him. You are your brother's keeper. Honey. You, need, you need to be an intercessor for him. It ain't about you anyways. It's about me. Glory to God. Honey. Get your eyes off yourself for a moment. You don't feel good, but hallelujah. On the process of you walking with a limp because he swatted you, hallelujah. Then you begin to think, glory to Jesus, hallelujah. I'm listening to the Father. Then he says, now, because you prayed for him, now, because you didn't get jealousy in your heart and be lifted up with yourself, when you get the opportunity to preach, I will cause people to pray for you. See, what you sow, you reap. As you make other people successful in the kingdom of God, God says, I will open up the doors and make sure uh, that you become successful yourself. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now, somebody say amen. Oh, don't be running from the light. Don't try to hide behind that bush. Get rid of the mind of religion. Turn to somebody and say, don't buy the lie. Get on God's side. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Mark chapter 4, 25. Mark chapter 4, 24 and 25. I'm going to read this out of the Amplified. And he said to them, be careful of what you are hearing. For the measure of thought and study you give and the truth you hear will be the measure and virtue and knowledge that comes back to you and more besides what shall be given to you who hear. In other words, he says, as you begin to show some diligence in obeying my word, as you begin some diligence, hallelujah, to try to bring some understanding to the word of God, he says, I'm going to give you more, hallelujah. I'm going to give you some holy treasure. I'm going to begin to bring identity to you. Hallelujah. I'm going to bring an anointing to you for you all understand. This isn't like any other Bible, hallelujah. It is living, hallelujah. It is full of spirit. And as you begin to put the word of God in you, which is spirit, then you will be full of me. The Bible 
Bible says if our eye be single, our whole body be full of light. Oh, hallelujah. Father, I thank you, Father, that I desire the presence of God more than I desire the works of the flesh. Father, I thank you, Father, that I desire the word of God more than, than I desire even a meal. Hallelujah. But if thy eye not be single, oh man, this, this looks pretty good over here. I think I'll, I'll how many know a, a bar is simply nothing but a counterfeit church? I've, I've said that before. A bar is nothing but a counterfeit church. That's where people go to have fellowship. How many know that when you look at behind the counter, it says spirit. Uh, the spirits, they come and try to get filled with the spirit. And they're, hallelujah, what kind of spirit? Jack Daniels or, or, or tequila or, or whatever you want to call it, hallelujah. The party. And so they get filled with the spirit. But it's not the righteous spirit of our God, hallelujah. It's a wrong spirit and it's going to take you to a place called deception. Because when you wake up in the morning, your pain will still be there. But guess what? You'll have a headache to go along with it. But when you get drunk with the Spirit of God, glory to Jesus, and you wake up in the morning, hallelujah, the only side effect that you're going to have, hallelujah, is the joy of the Lord. You're not going to have a headache, hallelujah. The only headache that you're going to bring is to the devil. And you're going to, you're going to be his work nightmare. Because he said, I tried to do this. I tried to disqualify him. I tried to tempt him. Hallelujah. But he overcame by the Word of God. See, that's what he tried to do to Jesus. He tried to, to destroy him. He came to tempt but Jesus rose up and he says, no, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, he says, oh, I will give you the kingdom. I will give you the glory of all these kingdoms. Just bow down and serve me. He says, hey, get beside me, devil, for it is written, I shall only serve one God, and him will I only serve. Haven't you, aren't you hungry, Jesus? Turn these stones into bread. No, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That proceeded out of the mouth of God. Oh, See, if you don't have the word in you, and you have both the lie and you have a religious mindset, when the devil comes knocking on your door, he's going to not just knock on your door, he's going to come in, he's going to set up home with you. He's going to watch TV with you, someone said. How many know the devil's like a burnt house guest? Would you invite him in? He don't like to leave. He don't like to leave. How many know when a snake bites you, there's poison that will run through your body? And the Bible says it this way. If you break a hedge, there'll be a serpent that will bite you. Now, when you come to the Lord and say, Father, Lord, forgive me of my sin, guess what? He will forgive you. But guess what? That poison will still be running through your, your system. You have to allow a healing process to take place. Oh, hallelujah. Come on now. Listen to the Lord. I can clap and pray. Be careful of what you're hearing. Verse 25. For to whom has will more be given. And from him who has nothing, even what he has will be taken away. By force. What does that mean? If you have nothing, because you have not Surrender to the will of the Father. You have not surrendered to the Word of God. Then that which you have mean nothing. Yeah, all right. Because His Word is something. Yes. His Word is faith coming out of the mouth of God. I'll take away from you. I'll take away your long life. Wow. I'll bring sickness and disease to you. I'll bring divorce to you. I'll, I'm going to destroy your family. I'm going to make sure that your children are cursed. I'm going to take everything that you have that right now seems to be nothing, and I'm going to take more. But the Bible says that the iniquities of the forefathers go to the third and fourth generation. It will affect your children what you're doing now. 
Yes, 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 yes. Talk about feet, feet, yes. But if you take God's side of the matter, he said that the blessings of God go to a thousand Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. Well, I'm uncomfortable, preacher. I, I, I don't like to hear that I'm going to have to change. I want to tell you, glory to Jesus. I want to tell you, there is good news. There is good news. When we understand, when we begin to take God's side in the matter, when we begin, there's going to be provision. There's going to be healing. There's going to be restoration. Hallelujah. Instead of being in a cursed realm, blessings shall overtake thee. Then you'll begin to understand who you are and begin to walk in the full inheritance. The Bible tells us that the blessings of Abraham will come upon through faith in Jesus Christ in Galatians chapter 3. The blessings of Abraham. Hallelujah. What is the blessings of Abraham? One of those blessings is that you shall possess the gates of your enemy. Hallelujah. How many know that sickness and poverty and lack is an enemy? How many know that all these things that the world is operating in can be destructive? Glory to Jesus. Hallelujah. How many want to have an anointing on your life? Yes, yes. But we know it will cost you everything. It will cost you everything. How many want to walk in the resurrection power of our Christ? First, we've got to go to the cross. How many know that we have to experience the cross before we can experience the resurrection? Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Don't be hating. Oh. <laughs> in Genesis 3, 9, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto them, Where art thou? And he said, I heard thy voice. I heard the word coming out of your mouth. And I was afraid. And I was naked and I hid myself. Why? Because of a sin? Now, how many know that we always begin to get right here when God begins to make us uncomfortable? People, like I said, people are pretty strange folks. And they, they begin to not understand what true repentance is. And so when God's light comes, we begin to get a little squirmish. Or we begin to get a little agitated. Or we begin to get a little uncomfortable. Because we don't understand what repentance will do. It will not uh, bring us into a, a place of bondage. But it's going to bring us into a place of liberty. God did not come to condemn us or to shame us. But he dealt with our sins so that he could draw us closer to him. But your sin has separated yourself from me. Oh, hallelujah. That's why people get a little uncomfortable when the preaching of the word comes forth. They say, I don't like that. Make me feel good. Well, I want to tell you, when we repent, it's the most awesome feeling yes. in the world, knowing that you're forgiven. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 